Two iconic cruisers go head-to-head -head in today's episode of Starship vs. Hey guys, this is Zachary Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Starship vs. Today, we once again put Halo against Star Wars. The CCS Battlecruiser of the Covenant goes against the Empire's Imperial II class Star Destroyer. As always, when comparing two different universes, especially ones as different as Halo and Star Wars, we have to make some fairly serious guesses and leaps of logic. So just remember, if this battle doesn't go exactly how you like, I'm not biased against Halo or Star Wars, I'm just doing my best with a different situation. That being said, take a second right now, vote in the upper right hand corner and let me know who you think will win. Alright, so let's start the actual comparison, and as always we're focusing on the vessels themselves. We'll assume that the officers and pilots on both vessels are equally skilled. First off, I'd like to take a look at armament, and these two ships in the Halo and Star Wars universe generally used vastly different weapon types. The Imperial 2 Star Destroyer and Star Wars Legends has a whopping combined 100 heavy and normal turbo laser batteries. It also has four devastating octuple barbette turbo lasers on each side of the command superstructure. The M2 also possesses various ion cannons, however notably does not make use of a point defense system. The standard CCS class battlecruiser on the other hand has 42 plasma cannons, 16 plasma torpedo silos, 50 pulse laser turrets, and two plasma lances, one primarily for excavation and one for ship to ship combat. The pulse laser cannons are typically used in a point defense role, while most of the other guns are designed for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Should be noted that the plasma torpedoes, however, are most effective when the shields on an enemy ship have already been dropped. It's very difficult to compare the firepower of these two vessels. The CCS is arguably a bit more flexible, it operates in different roles, while the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer is basically a frontline assault ship. The only way that we can even guesstimate firepower is by trying to determine the strength of the standard weapon in both Halo and Star Wars. The problem here is that the portrayal is actually fairly similar in both universes. I do personally think that the Star Destroyer is a little bit stronger, but it's all fairly close. The CCS can use its two largest weapons to glass a planet, literally destroying the entire surface and making it inhabitable. Now, typically a Covenant fleet is used to glass planets just due to the sheer enormous amount of energy needed, however, it's on that magnitude. Star Destroyers seem to put out a similar amount of power from their weapons. I think the best orbital bombardment we see comes from the Thrawn trilogy. There, a single shot from one turbo laser is enough to boil part of an ocean, causing huge tsunamis and really just just creating devastating destruction, and this is one one-thousandth of the power of the vessel. We've seen orbital bombardment in Star Wars do everything from destroy all life on the planet all the way down to melting a planet's crust, so there is, I think, at least a comparable amount of power there, if not slightly more. Looking at the intangibles of weapon technology, both Star Wars and Halo seems to have different advantages. One thing that people always bring up is range, either that Star Wars is at a longer range or that Halo is. When I say range, I mean the distance at which ships can effectively attack each other. To me, this is a real non-issue. Battles in both universes are portrayed as being relatively close because that's what looks coolest. However, when you get to the expanded universe, the ranges are explained to be thousands of kilometers, hundreds of thousands of kilometers, or even more. For example, in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, despite the fact that the movie shows the ships basically firing right next to each other, the book says that they're thousands of kilometers away with turbo lasers being fired at a fraction of light speed. It just doesn't match what we see in the main material. Things are even crazier in the Incredible Cross Sections book, which says that a Venator can accurately hit a target that's 10 light minutes away, which is over 100 million kilometers. The same can generally be said for Halo, so I'm not going to take range into consideration here. In Halo, most weapons are operated by automated firing processes, however, we still very often see large capital ships miss even slow-moving targets. Although the accuracy should be far better than that of Star Wars, I don't really see any proof of this. Otherwise, I do think the Star Destroyer is a bit more optimized for ship-to-ship -ship combat, however, in this category, I'm going to give both ships a tie. Next, let's talk about shielding and general ship durability. This is always one of the hardest categories to really look at in any sort of depth. I do think the Covenant is at a drastic disadvantage here for reasons people don't often consider when doing Halo versus Star Wars matchup. First of all, Covenant ship-based capital shields
shields and really all covenant shielding technology is depleted extremely quickly when facing energy based weapons. It is true that covenant shields do recharge fairly quickly, but when facing the Star Wars universe, they'll be dealing with not only turbo lasers, but also ion cannons, which we know output an extreme amount of energy. Covenant shielding is very effective against UNSC projectiles, but I think will struggle under a turbo laser barrage. Another thing worth considering is that covenant ships have to take down a portion of their shield in order to fire their main weapons. With the amount of firepower that an Imperial 2 outputs, the chance of a blast going through one of these openings is there. Aside from that, there's not really anything we can point to to say that Star Wars or Halo has stronger energy shielding generally. Star Wars' best feat is in The Empire Strikes Back when we see those Star Destroyers survive in an asteroid field for some time, although one is destroyed. Generally though, I don't think that really helps us make a comparison. All in all, I give the advantage in defense to the Star Destroyer. While Covenant shielding may or may not not be superior, it falls quickly to energy based weapons. On the other hand, the shields of the Star Wars universe are effective against both projectiles and energy weapons. Next up we have Fighter Complement. Based on Halo Warfleet, the Truth and Reconciliation, which I'm assuming was a standard CCS, carried 32 fighters. These would have been Seraphs, which are shielded, well armed fighters. The Empire on the other hand has 72 TIE Fighters. TIE Fighters are relatively poor Star Fighters, especially when compared to Seraphs. Halo also has the advantage here as the CCS class cruiser has an extensive point defense system. The Imperial 2 does not and I think its weapons will likely struggle to take the Seraph down. For that reason I'll give this category to the CCS. With those three categories now explored in some depth, let's do the actual matchup. I think that this is relatively close. These two ships are really the center of both the Imperial and Covenant fleets. I think the CCS is a bit more of a multi-role vessel than the Star Destroyer which is primarily used for capital ship engagements. However, I do nonetheless find it difficult to actually choose which one has more offensive potential. Really, the only thing that makes this match decidable for me is the fact that Covenant energy shields in my mind are much less effective at stopping energy-based weapons than those of the Empire. And that to me is the difference. I think the Starfighters of the Covenant are good, but not enough to make up the Empire's advantage in shielding. The Empire's ties will have to stay back, but I think with twice as many, they should be able to at least somewhat screen against the Covenant. I do also personally believe that Star Wars is on a higher level energy wise than Halo and I think just personally that the Star Destroyer would be able to do more damage than the CCS but I haven't really brought that into consideration for this matchup. All in all I give this to the Empire and I say they win about 6.5 times out of 10. I've left that little bit of a cushion just in case I am wrong about energy weapons or if the Covenant can somehow get a boarding party on the ISD. I think if the Covenant may to get a few thousand troops on the ship, then it will go down. That however is just my opinion. Let me know what you think by not only voting earlier on in this video, but posting down in the comment section. If you have any future ideas, make sure you let me know that too, and if you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Thanks for watching guys, until next time, may the force be with you.